Hey guys, welcome into today's video. Today I'm gonna do a full foundation declutter video. These are all of my foundations. I had a lot more, but I've done other like declutter videos where I've included basically my whole collection and I got rid of a lot of foundations, but this is going to be a true full foundation video. I have way too much. I have included some of these like in short declutters on my page, but I wanna do a full in-depth declutter and finally, finally get rid of everything. I have my little wet wipes out because I wanna do full like mini reviews and swatches of all of this. Um, I think those are helpful when doing these kind of videos because like just saying I don't like it <laughs> sometimes like doesn't help. And so while this might be a little bit of rest and relaxation and we all love declutter videos, I also want it to be a little bit informative. So that is why I want to do the full swatching so you can kind of see like the consistency and the lightness, medium coverage or fullness of the coverage of the foundation. So I'm not exactly sure how many I have, but I do have a pretty good idea of which ones are going to go. I do have my little box here on the floor of some other makeup that I'm declaring that I am hoping to give to my sister. So after doing this video, I think I'll have the box pretty completely full. I do have one other box to give to her and then I can send it on out of my house finally. And then after we are done, I definitely want to put them in to my foundation drawer where I keep my concealers and just do like a short organization because it was getting out of control. I couldn't see anything. So that'll make me feel a little bit better and really nobody needs all these foundations. I just test a lot. And once I've done my videos on them, I really want them out of my collection because I really only want to keep the stuff that like really works for me and makes me feel super pretty and confident and all that good stuff. So let me set up the camera and we'll get started. Okay, so I don't have everything in frame, but I think this leaves enough space for me to kind of do some of the swatches. So I'll just start picking randomly. So the first one that I have is the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is basically like a tinted sunscreen. This is really just like a whisper of coverage. It's super watery. It doesn't do a whole lot in terms of like any kind of coverage. It's just very, very slight tint to it. It more like evens your skin tone for like days that, you know, you kind of want to go to the pool, but that's about it. So it's like more of almost like a primer, just very, very light tinted moisturizer. I am going to keep this one because I live in Florida and we do a lot of pool days. And because of that reason, I like to just lather up SPF and it's nice to have something that can kind of like taint your skin, just give you a little bit of blur and offer that SPF without it being like full fledged foundation. So I am going to keep this one for that reason. This one from Tower 28, the Sunny Days with SPF 30. It's definitely a lighter weight formula, but it has a little bit of tack to it. It definitely gives a little bit of grip to the skin and it does provide light coverage. This isn't my favorite tinted sunscreen or tinted moisturizer that I've ever tried. It's not the most, I'm sorry, I like had a bug bite I scratched. It's not the most perfecting to my skin than like maybe some of my other ones with really high SPF, but I do like it. And I think it's it's a quite relevant product because a lot of people do like this. So I wanna hold on to this one. One that I am gonna get rid of is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I think this is nice if you like just very, very makeup, no makeup days. I just don't think this gives me enough coverage. And while the coverage is very, very similar to something light like the Paula's Choice, it just doesn't have any kind of SPF in it whatsoever and so you know in the absence of like being something that offers sunscreen this is just too light of a coverage for me because if I'm going to go for something that's like a tinted sunscreen or something that's this light of a coverage that I want it to really be something that I'm going to like use at the pool and because this doesn't have it it's just not something that like kind of works for me very well I did purchase this for a full face of Glossier and I know now that they're moving into Sephora these products may become like more relevant and popular I I just don't think I need to keep it. So this one is going to go. The next one that I have here is from Clearance. This is the Everlasting Youth Fluid. It says it's illuminating and firming foundation. There is something so beautiful about this foundation. It's more medium, almost full coverage, but it has just a really like sophisticated look on the skin. Can you see just how opaque it is? But it has this I don't know, almost airbrushed look on my face and it wears a really long time. It just wears really well in my face. It's very beautiful. It does have a slight scent to it. I do notice that it's almost floral. So if you're not into that, this isn't something that I would try. And I just think this is like so beautiful that it really, really shocked me. This is fairly new to me. It is definitely staying. 
One that is definitely going to go is the Makeup Forever HD Foundation. I believe this has even been like reformulated and repackaged. It's definitely old, like several years at this point, and it was a beautiful foundation. It's like medium to full coverage, but it just played nicely with my skin. It wore down beautifully. It lasted a really long time. I didn't get like the caking issues or the breaking apart upon my nose or my texture that I sometimes get with like heavier or more full coverage foundations. I just didn't get that with this. I think that it was an absolutely beautiful foundation. Unfortunately, it's just like old. And I noticed that I'm so sensitive to makeup that's older that causes me to break out that when I started decluttering a lot of my like base products that were a little bit older and started using ones that were newer to me, my breakouts were much less frequent. So I am super conscientious of using older makeup at this point and I know this is several years old and it has a 12 month shelf life. So it's gotta go. I don't think I wanna like repurchase their new reformulated version or the new other foundation that they put out because I just have so many, but I did like this. It's old, gotta go. I'll just grab this one that like fell over here. So this is also newer to me. This is the Tula Radiant Skin Brightening Serum Tint. This also has an SPF of 30. I really dislike this product. And I'm coming to find that some of like the Tula products that are like base products and not just skincare don't really work that well for my skin. They tend to look dry on my skin. I don't understand why it is for something that's such a like lightweight formula this does offer a little bit more coverage than some of my other like sheerer skin tints for example the iconic london doesn't have as much coverage as this so this does give a little bit more i think this is very similar to the tower 28 and i just much prefer the tower 28 than this one it just breaks apart on my nose almost immediately when putting it on and I don't understand that. So I don't know if it's just my skin type that it just doesn't work well for, but I am gonna keep this around and I'll tell you why, because I like the fact that it has an SPF of 30 and I thought I'm gonna throw this on the kids this coming summer, like on their face, where they're like really sensitive to me spraying the like spray can sunscreen. I'm gonna apply this instead and get some use out of it. I don't care if it offers like a tint, it's still like, you know, skincare infused product. And so I might as well get my money's worth out of it because we just had our pool put in. So yeah, but I am not gonna wear it on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, next up, I have the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. This is the dewy and smooth version for normal to dry skin. I don't hear anybody really talking about the dewy smooth, you know, it's all about the poreless matte version but the matte and poreless is not going to work for me because i don't like wear something that's mattifying i had to get the dewy and smooth version and i really like this i do think that it's like oxidized at this point i still do use it but it's getting on like the older side it's really pretty it plays well on my skin like it doesn't break apart it's a very nice like affordable foundation unfortunately i probably won't keep this that much longer it's going to stay now but you can see how much it's like oxidized this is in the shade 115 which is ivory and this is not looking too much like an ivory shade so gonna stay but by the summertime i am going to end up having to declutter this just due to age one that i am definitely getting rid of is this tinted moisturizer from the balm it's the antidotes tinted moisturizer it turned bad like on the 11th month. I haven't had this more than 12 months at this point. And it's been kind of like sitting in the declutter pile waiting to go. But as you can see, it's really gross on the inside. This is clean beauty with green packaging. And that may be the reason that it's turned so quickly because there are no preservatives in this. And overall, I do like the balm products. I'm just not gonna put this like on the back of my hand because it has turned. So it has to go. It honestly wasn't my favorite tinted moisturizer in the first place it's not very long lasting it didn't do anything than some of the other ones do that are really nice so this one has to go in the trash the next one i have is the merit stick this is called the minimalist perfecting complexion stick this is also like listed as like a concealer this one is in the shade silk i wanted to try this because they reformulated it and a lot of people really liked it and i think even enjoyed the reformulation and merit was pretty relevant but i mean i'm just not an overly big fan of stick foundations in general. I actually think that this is probably one of my favorite 
like stick foundations that I've tried because it actually like it offers a little bit more hydration than a lot of stick foundations do. It actually is like very light coverage when you get it on. It's not overly heavy or cakey, which the Hourglass stick foundation was on me. So I initially thought I was going to declutter this, but then I started wearing it a couple more times and I do like it. What I do find with this is that it's just not super long lasting. Like after four or five hours, it's like completely faded off of my face. I like it. I don't love it, but it is going to stay in my collection after all. One that is gonna go is not a foundation, but that's how I was using it because it was just so full coverage. This is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer, and I have mine in the shade Snow. This one I really liked as both a concealer and a foundation. It really was just like a multi-use product. I got mine in a shade that was a little bit too dark and almost like a little bit too, it pulls like pretty yellow on my face. But I overall, I liked the consistency. I didn't think it was too heavy of a formula for being full coverage. Like I just loved that about it. And so I'd slather that all over my face and just wear it as like concealer and foundation. And it was really nice. The problem is it is definitely like two or three years old at this point, And I just don't want to be using products that old. So this one's going to go. The NYX Bear With Me Blur is super new and I've only used it one time. So I can't declutter it for the sheer fact of I've only tested this product once. What I can say about it is that I think it's meant for people with more like oily skin. It is not super dry skin friendly because it's more mattifying and that's just not something that I'm into. I like a satin matte or even a matte that's kind of like I don't know, hydrating. There are just some that do work for dry skin people. And this one just tends to pull some of the moisture out of my face and start emphasizing like a lot of texture on my cheeks, which is not something that a lot of foundations actually do. But I am gonna test this with like a facial oil. And because it's so new and it's probably gonna be something that like goes in the 2023 like roundup of foundations. So I'm gonna keep this twofold to continue testing it in different ways with like a facial oil and then potentially so that I can include it for 2023's video. But for dry skin folks, guys, this is, this is not the friendliest foundation. One full coverage foundation that is, in my opinion, super dry skin friendly is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie. This is super full coverage. One of the most full coverage foundations that I've ever tried, and it does really play well with my dry skin. I never had any issues with it like drying me out, and it's really surprising. So it was one that I really enjoyed using. I just didn't use it that often because I don't always grab for full coverage, but can you see like just how opaque that is? Like it's super full coverage. This is one that I'm going to declutter simply because I've had it for probably two or three years. Don't want to use something that's that old, but this one I would definitely repurchase. Another one that is definitely going to stay is the Wet n Wild dewy version of the Photo Focus Foundation. I am a huge fan of Wet n Wild products overall. I just think they're affordable. I think that they are pretty good quality, honestly, for drugstore. And I like the dewy version of this. They do have a matte version, I believe. I don't love the applicator, but it, you know, it is what it is. It's this weird like spatula thing. Overall, the formula smells like nail polish remover in my opinion, but this is just like a, a medium coverage foundation. I maybe light to medium, but I usually get a medium coverage out of it, but it's such a lightweight formula. It looks beautiful on my skin. It doesn't break apart. It's just not too heavy. It's very nice. It's the right amount of dewy without looking greasy. So I really do enjoy this foundation. So I am gonna hold on to this one. One that I am gonna get rid of that I've used like a considerable amount is my L'Oreal True Match Nude. It's it's, it's nice. Like it's medium to full coverage. It's got one of those like serum droppers. It's not a bad foundation. Well, it, the dropper doesn't really work. That's one thing that I noticed about it. I would just kind of like use the dropper and apply it directly to my face. So yeah, it's like a medium to full coverage foundation. Honestly, you can build it up like quite easy to full coverage and it's pretty nice. Even though it says it has like hyaluronic acid and it's a tinted serum, it was definitely more satin finish than I thought it was gonna be. But I do like me a satin finish because typically those tend to last longer on the face. So it was like right in the middle. It was really, really nice. It's just, I probably don't love this over some of my other satin finished foundations and I have used a considerable amount. So I, I had to like try and really think like which satin foundations do I wanna keep? Cause I don't wanna keep all of these cause they're just not my most reached for. So this one just didn't make the cut. I, I do think it's nice sometimes 
when they're drier days out, it is a little bit heavy. So I'm gonna let this one go. Another one that I'm gonna let go is the Clinique Even Better Refresh. I think this is a really full coverage foundation. I think it was really nice. I actually do get along with like a lot of Clinique products, like base products, but it's just been in my collection too long. That's really the only reason. I think it played nicely. It does tend to get a little bit heavy, so I have to go in with a light hand on this. It's not something that I can just like slather on. It is more full coverage. I did get it in a shade that's probably too deep for me. It's the CN20 Fair, but it was always too deep it's not just from oxidation like i said i really do like this i think it was satin but i think it was hydrating and i think it was full coverage and i believe this is like three years old at this point and it has a 24 month shelf life so for the sake of my face and breaking out it's gotta go one that is gonna stay is the lys triple fix serum foundation i have mine in the shade ln6 I like this. This is not my favorite foundation ever. I think it's medium coverage, but I think it's lightweight. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. It's one of those that's not super long lasting, which doesn't surprise me for something that's called a serum foundation. Medium coverage, pretty lightweight formula, plays nicely. I mean, it just doesn't give me any real issues. It's just not super long lasting. I have a time and place in my life for foundations that are beautiful but don't last that long on my face so this one gets to stay the next one that i have is the shiseido synchro skin radiant lifting foundation i actually recently purchased this i thought i was gonna love it because a lot of people with like dry skin had attested to the fact that they really liked this and there is like a different version that isn't like the radiant skin lifting i think this is medium to full coverage but it has a tendency to look a little bit like heavy and cakey on me and so this is definitely a foundation that I have to go in with a light hand. I don't think it's radiant though. I, I miss the radiant part about it. I just don't see it when I put it on. It's not like I'm dewy. It's not like my oils are peeking through. I almost feel like even the radiant lifting is in the name that it just doesn't pull like radiant. I think it pulls like to a satin finish on my face, but because it's newer and because it does work if I go in with a lighter hand and it's a pretty long lasting product, I do want to hold on to this. I do have mine in the shade 160 Shell. One that is going to go is the She Glam Skin Fluencer Foundation. I have mine in the shade Fair. I have a couple of like potted foundations or potted balms. And when I was going back through and like wearing all of them over again to see which ones I liked the best, I just realized that this one was like okay. It was a little bit more of a finicky product. Like it's almost that like whipped formula. It is full coverage. I just don't think that it wore the greatest on my face. It just kind of broke apart on my nose as the day carried on and so I like some of my other like full coverage balms that I have in my collection so I thought I was gonna hold on to this one but I am gonna let it go as it relates to like full coverage balms this is one that I actually really do like this is the KVD good apple balm this is in the shade light 012 this is one that like you know is that like super mixed reviews some people love it some people hate it I absolutely love it it's one of the like full coverage foundations that actually looks really good on me it just looks really airbrushed i get people asking me like what are you wearing like what foundation are you wearing today when i'm wearing this foundation so that's always like usually a good indication that it pr looks pretty good on my skin it just works really well for me i know this tends to be like a pretty oily product but for somebody who's like really dry skinned that doesn't bother me at all. I think that like the right amount of oils in like a full coverage foundation for dry skin people is actually like really quite nice. So I am gonna hold on to this one. One that I am definitely gonna let go of is the Even Steven Whipped Foundation from The Balm. It is totally like dried out. Like if you guys can see the bottom here, it does have a 12 month shelf life on it. But like I said, this I got at the same time as the other tinted foundation and it's totally like changed consistencies. It's like weird and like bouncy in there now as opposed to like whipped, it's almost like jello. I don't know, you can definitely tell that the product has gone bad because it's like definitely separating just on like the outside of the packaging. Wow, I just got it all messy but so yeah i mean i think it was okay i prefer the kvd good apple i think this is like quite similar formula and i didn't like it more than the kvd and because it's gone bad i'm just gonna let this go one that i am gonna hold on to is the iconic london super smoother blurring skin tint i don't think this is blurring i think it's really really watery super light coverage 
I think it's nice though. It's one of those that plays well on my skin of the like skin tints that I've actually tried recently. Cause I told you like I tried the Tula one and unfortunately the Tula one looked super dry, but this was one of the few that just like didn't. It actually looked really nice. It just lasts like a minute and a half. Like it's just not super long lasting. It's like three or four hours max of just like this super light coverage. But you know, again, I have a time and place in my collection for three or four hours of coverage. And like, I'm okay with that. If I want something super, super light and I'm just like hanging around the house, this is one that I would grab for, or I would just set down with a powder that offers a little bit of coverage. And I have mine in the shade Neutral Light. So this one actually surprised me. I didn't think I was gonna pick it up, but I do quite enjoy it, so it stays. One that is definitely gonna leave my collection, sadly, is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This one I have used a considerable amount of, but it has already turned, like I can smell it. It was beautiful. It's like a satin finish, medium coverage foundation. Like it is really nice. Like it definitely has properties that you can understand like were worth the hype for like this foundation and probably even more so at the time that it launched. Unfortunately, I've had this for three years easily and because I can smell it and because I'm super sensitive to the fact that my face just breaks out when the products have turned, even though I know a lot of us keep our foundations and just beauty products in general longer than we should i am totally gonna let this go i'm not gonna repurchase it because i just have way too many and that's just silly <laughs> but that's not gonna stop me from buying more like new releases for sure but anyway yeah this one's gonna go not a repurchase for me i am surprisingly going to let go my estee lauder double wear this was too dark of a shade always it was one w1 bone but it turned like a yellow on me it was always that way and i've had this in my collection for i don't know i don't know maybe it's been two years now it's just two years is like too long like i want to keep my foundations for a maximum of two years and no longer than that because of my skin sensitivity see how like yellow it pulls i think this is another one of those full coverage foundations that actually works well for people with dry skin i do a Again, think you have to like be careful like don't over mattify with like an extra drying powder but otherwise it does play nicely with dry skin people at least for me and so I did like it it's just that yeah at the two-year mark I'm I'm letting this go one that is definitely gonna stay in my collection is the Bobbi Brown skin long wearing weightless foundation I wouldn't say this is like full coverage immediately I think this is like more medium to buildable full coverage it's definitely like an interesting shade what shade is this this one is in the shade ivory it definitely pulls like a little bit orange more so than like you know like neutral which ivory almost kind of is and it's fine it works for me i can go up and down like two different shades and still be fine with it, it i don't get bothered by it that much this is another one of those that's like that satin kind of finished foundation that's just like that medium to full coverage and it does last a good amount of time so i really do like this foundation i do have to be careful though this one is one that tends to sink into my fine lines and so i usually go super light over my smile lines with this. Otherwise it's beautiful. So this is one that stays. Another one that is going to stay is the Make Beauty Radiant Skin Tint. I guess it's called the Diffusion Dew Radiant Skin Tint. I don't know, it's in 1.5. I purchased this and the first time that I used it, I really didn't like it because it just seemed like it was absolutely no coverage whatsoever. But I wore it again and I thought that like, wow, you know, this is actually light, can be buildable formula. I just went in with a little bit of a heavier layer. And honestly, after I did that, like it didn't look too cakey. It just looked really nice. It doesn't sink into my smile lines. This is just another one that's like, four or five hours and after that like it's almost gone off of my face like it's definitely sunk into my face it's gone it, it's like it didn't last it's not super long wearing or anything but again there's a time and a place in my collection for things that do that this is relatively new i have only used this a couple of times so this one's gonna stay another one that i'm really enjoying from the drugstore this is a new release this is the l'oreal true match super blendable foundation in the shade n1 this one is a satin finish it's medium coverage it just plays so nicely with every primer and it has like a beautiful finish it's one of the lightest weight foundations that i have in my collection and i think that's what they meant by super blendable is that it's just such a lightweight formula with medium coverage and a satin finish like it's really really good i'm highly enjoying it super new release from the drugstore i think it just launched at the very beginning of the year so i've been quite enjoying this this is definitely going to stay it is dry skin approved i i just i don't know i'm just loving this 
One that I debated on keeping was the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. And I just wore this like recently. I'm on the fence about this product because I want to keep affordable makeup in my collection. It's just that I don't think this one is like my absolute favorite. It's like medium to full coverage. It is that like satin finish. See, it's just like that, that tacky kind of finish. You can just like see the difference when I'm doing these swatches. That some of these tackier ones, for whatever reason, they kind of like break apart on my face. Like they have a tendency to look cakey and start breaking apart on my nose mostly. M my nose and my chin where I have like a lot of texture and like pores. And I don't know. Like, I want to keep something that's really affordable, and I went back and forth on this product, and it was okay. I think I'm going to let this go. I just have so many others in my collection that if I keep it, it's just going to be for, like, reference reasons. And because it's probably two years old at this point, like, right on that mark, that it's it's got a lot of reasons not to stay. So I'm just going to let it go. The next one that I have is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. This has an SPF of 45. I don't know what this line is in here, but it's been like that since I bought it. I swear it's always been like that. I don't understand. It's not like it's just oxidized or anything. But this is one of my favorite like medium coverage, like tinted sunscreen moisturizers. It is in a dark shade. It's always been like that. What shade did I get? I got one and two Ecru, and it's always just been a little bit too dark for me, but I just don't care. This is such a beautiful, like hydrating foundation. Like I, I can't even describe. This just looks so gorgeous on the skin, and I love that it's an SPF 45. It's very similar to the one behind it from YSL that I'll talk about in a minute. Literally perform identically. They're both very hydrating, very medium to full coverage. They just look gorgeous and they last a super long time. And also, even though they're this like full coverage, they never break apart on my face. Like you'll have to pry this out of my hands. This, when it goes bad, I will repurchase this. Naturally, I think we'll go over the YSL Touche Igla All-in-One Glow. This has an SPF of 23. It's the Octanoxate Sunscreen. This is the like natural medium coverage, long-lasting hydration and oil-free. Like this is perfect. This is another one just like the Estee Lauder that works like super well is medium to full coverage for dry skin that is super long lasting and like offers hydration without looking greasy and has a good amount of SPF in it. Unfortunately, like it's oxidized. Like you can see like how old it is. And even like when I played with it recently, cause I was gonna hold on to this, it's just kind of like doing this weird thing on my hand. Like it's not rubbing in fully. You can tell that the formula is off. Like it's definitely gone bad. And of course that happens with things that have sunscreen in it. So for the sake of my skin, I definitely have to let this go, but I don't want to, I don't want to. This is definitely something I would repurchase. Unfortunately, I'm not even sure YSL makes this exact foundation anymore. So like I'm super bummed that I didn't get more use out of it because I love it. But at least I have the Estee Lauder, which is a little bit newer and even less expensive. So I'm gonna let this one go and the Estee Lauder is gonna stay. Okay, I've rearranged some of the foundations to be more in frame. So we'll just go over the first one here. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder. I have mine in the shade Fair too. I think this was a hit or miss for people. I think that some people like absolutely loved it and then some people were like, nah, this is like weird and it like dries your skin out. I don't find that. This is one of those like balmy formulas that I just really like. I think it offers like medium coverage, but it's just another one that just plays really well with my dry skin because it's almost like because it's like that balmy formula, like it has a little bit of extra oils in it. I wouldn't say that it's the longest lasting. I'd say probably after about six hours, it starts to fade off, but I really, really like this. Like the finish of it is gorgeous. It makes my skin look super airbrushed. I don't mind it at all. Again, it's one of the better like balms in my collection and this finishing powder, super finely milled, very, very comfortable, nice, just satiny formula. I know that it's not like a setting powder, but as a finishing powder, I just, I don't know, I think it's beautiful. So I actually really do like this product. So this is gonna stay. The next one that I have here is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. It's supposed to be 24 hours, long wearing, but full coverage. 
Um, it's not my favorite like full coverage foundation. I think it's like a lightweight formula. I want to say that it has like a tendency to like look too heavy. Even though it's super lightweight, it's like deceiving. It's one of those things that you can tend to like go in heavier than you think you should because it's so lightweight. Like, I don't know if you could see just how lightweight the formula was when I swatched it, but it's very, very lightweight. And so I always have to be careful. Like I have to remind myself, this is super full coverage. Don't go crazy with it, even though it's super lightweight. I've used this a couple of times and I can't say that I find it like overly hydrating. And if I am careful with how much I apply, like it's actually quite nice, but because it's a little bit finicky for me, like it's just not my favorite, but I do think it's good and it's relatively new. Like I've only used this like a handful of times. So this is gonna stay. The next one that I have is the Bite Beauty Changemaker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. This one is in the shade L30. I loved this product. I think it was made for like dry skin people because I think it has like a little bit of oils in it. It was like lightweight with medium coverage or light to medium like buildable coverage. I never saw it sinking into any of my fine lines. It just looked so beautiful. It was like just the right amount of dewy without being too dewy. I thought it lasted a decent amount of time, maybe five or six hours before you'd have to like repowder or kind of touch up. And I loved it, I really did. I was a, such a big fan of Bite Beauty products. Like overall, there wasn't one that I tried that I did not like. So I was sorry to see them go out of business. This is expired. Like I've had this over 12 months. They're no longer making this. And if it wasn't old, I would definitely hold on to it. But because it is, and because of my like sensitive skin, I have to let this go. I'm sad, but I have to let it go. The next one that I have is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac. It's called the Tinted Glow Hydrator and mine is in the shade 30 Light. I think this one is relatively similar to the Bite Beauty one, but just even more hydrating. Like it has a lot of hydrating properties in it while being a medium coverage. The problem with this is that I live in Florida and so this foundation does not play well with the humidity. What it tends to do is like pull a lot of my natural oils out. My natural oils mix with this look so extra dewy that it's just too much sometimes so I'm only using this in like the days that it's super dry it's just that like I never can tell what days are gonna be drier I just think it's too dewy it's just crazy mixed with the humidity that it just doesn't work great and I have like other dewy tinted moisturizers or tinted hydrators in my collection that I just prefer more than this and so I wasn't gonna do it but I'm gonna let this go one that I am gonna hold on to is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. This is like a dupe for the Urban Decay Hydromaniac, even though I think this actually came out before that one. I don't know, maybe it didn't. This is very similar, light to medium coverage, but it's like just the right amount of hydration without looking greasy. Like, I love this. Just a super lightweight formula that offers like immediate medium coverage. It doesn't look too dewy because it is oil free. It's the right amount, it's perfect. Like, I love this Wet n Wild product. This is one that when it goes bad, I would repurchase it. And this is definitely gonna stay. This is in the shade light. Another one here that I have is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. I almost feel like this is more of a skin tint because it's just like a lighter coverage, lighter weight formula, but it's almost more sheer. Like it's definitely this very, very light coverage. I guess you could kind of build it to medium, but I mean, not really. I just think it's beautiful. It has a really nice finish. It works well with my dry skin without looking cakey. I have mine in the shade 1.5N. I'm just an overall like pretty big fan of Dior base products like this foundation and all of their concealers that I've tried I just really really like them so this one is going to stay the next one that I have here is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This has an SPF of 20. I have mine in the shade Light Neutral 140. This is another one of those that's like light to medium coverage. That's that weird like tacky, like balmy, like sticky finished foundation. And for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to work on my skin. Like my dry skin, my skin type, I just don't know what it is that this kind of consistency in a foundation, which I've swatched a couple that I felt like this and I'm decluttering all of them for the very same reason. And it's almost hard to tell that it's like that unless you're swatching these, but I can tell now that every one of those that has that consistency pretty much besides like maybe the Shiseido 
just doesn't work for me. And so, and I think this pulls a little bit yellow. This one less than the concealer, and I actually ended up decluttering it already because it pulled too yellow. And I think all of Kosas products tend to do that. I don't think this has gone bad yet. Like a lot of people say Kosas products do. Yeah, it just had the tendency to like, look cakey on my nose and the textured part of my face is probably because that consistency just like doesn't sit well on my skin. Like my skin must just not like absorb certain foundations that have that consistency. So I am gonna let this one go. Another one that I, I do like is the number seven Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. This one is suitable for sensitive skin. I really like a lot of number seven products. This is in the shade Calico. It is coming up on expiration, 6 2023 in about five months from now, a little less than five months. I do like this. This again has that like kind of similar consistency to the Kosas one where it's just a little bit like moussey and this is like medium coverage. This one I notice actually doesn't last that long on me. This is like another one of those that lasts about five hours and then it goes away. But this is another one where I feel like it starts to cake up around my nose less than the Kosas one, but even still starts to look a little patchy, I guess, it, like break apart on my nose. And so, because I don't love it, I just like it. <laughs> and because I have all these other foundations and there are many that I prefer more than this one, I am gonna let this one go. The next one that I have here is the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation from Danessa Myricks. This is a super lightweight formula, but very full coverage. It's very interesting of this like consistency and like the coverage of this. It just throws you. It's just pretty lightweight, runny formula, but it's like medium to full coverage right away. Like it doesn't need to be built up. But again, it is that like sticky consistency. The same thing that I keep saying in all these foundations that just don't work for me, this breaks apart on my nose. It must be that foundations that are this type of sticky consistency just don't sink into my skin very well and so that's what causes them to break apart on my nose i've used it like all of four times and you know it's not the cheapest thing in the world but i am gonna let this one go I do have a bin here and all of these in this bin here I absolutely love. So I think that I'll just like go through these really quickly. Well, not maybe love all of them, but I'm keeping all of them and most of them I absolutely love. So I think I'll just go through them really quickly because none of them I'm getting rid of. The first one that I have is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I think this is a medium coverage foundation that has like a satin finish. It's just like a nice consistency that plays well on my skin. It, it's like about a five or six hour foundation on me before where it starts to like really wear off. I don't think it's super long lasting, but it's right in between like a natural finish with a satin finish. And so it looks really good, but it's just not that sticky formula that doesn't work well on my skin. This is not my like holy grail foundation. Like I think a lot of people have said like, this is all oh, the top foundation maybe of 2022. I don't think that's the case for me, but I do really enjoy it. And I do think it's beautiful for the reasons that I mentioned. So this is gonna stay. The next one that I have I, that I absolutely love is the Lancome Tinty Dole Ultra Wear Karen Glow. This is one of those like medium to full coverage foundations that has an absolute satin finish immediately. There's nothing dewy about it, but it's not sticky. It's not like that, that tacky formula. It's not balmy. It's just perfect. Like it is one of the satin foundations that works the best on my dry skin. It seems to like absorb into my skin very nicely. It sits upon my texture really, really well. I don't notice anything about the Karen Glow. Like there's nothing glowy about it or dewy about it, but in its satin finished state, it's so gorgeous. I have mine in the shade 105W. I think this is beautiful and probably like my favorite satin finished foundation. I'm calling it satin because I think that's its finish, but I think it's probably my favorite satin finished foundation that launched in 2022. So I love this, keeping this one. I just realized I said keeping that, but I already told you I'm keeping everything in there. The next one that I have is the Oma Beauty Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. Honestly, this name sounds like it's, you know, like contradicts itself. Soft matte, but it's hydrating. Oh my goodness. I actually think it is. Like, I think it's semi-hydrating foundation that has like a soft matte finish, like a satin matte finish. It just plays really well with my dry skin. I just love a lot of like Oma Beauty products. And for whatever reason, like it just, I don't know if you can see on 
on this swatch like it looks a little dark it, it's always been dark for me like i got it in a shade that's too dark this one is in the shade t3c fair lady and i always knew since the day i got it it was too dark but i just drag it all the way down my neck i don't care because it's just so beautiful honestly i'm such a huge fan of oma beauty products like in general eyeshadows like everything i've tried from her quite enjoy and i think this is such a like a dry skin friendly foundation i like to mattify in like a hydrating way it's so weird like i don't want to look super dewy sometimes but i just can't have it like suck the moisture out of my face so this one just this one does that like i just love it so i'm keeping this the next one that I have maybe isn't even a foundation. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Treatment Makeup with Sunscreen. I think this is made to be like an under the foundation, like glowy-ish kind of product. This is in the shade 120 Cream Ivory. I just actually think it gives me coverage. Like it's that whisper of coverage that looks so beautiful on the skin. It actually lasts a good amount of time. It doesn't actually call itself foundation. And I think that it confused people when it launched year before last and people were like well okay is it a foundation or isn't it but i just think that it actually gives me like the perfect amount of light coverage if that's something that i'm looking for without fading off instantly it has a good amount of lasting power for being something that's so sheer i've been reaching for this quite a bit lately and i really love this so i'm keeping this one Okay, next one. Full disclosure, you guys, I know this like rocked the socks off of people when it launched the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and I have mine in the shade Duville. That just wasn't the case for me. Like I found this to be more of a, like more full coverage than medium coverage foundation. And it was like, a satin finish like a satin matte finish but like it had a tendency to creep into my fine lines it had a tendency to look too heavy because it's so full coverage and i like it but i have to be super careful because it's so lightweight it's another one of those that performs kind of like the catrice and that it's super deceiving because it's super lightweight that i have a tendency to go too heavy and so then it looks too heavy straight up like it's obvious that i'm wearing like a lot and so this is one of those products that like less is more for me and so i think that has to do with just my skin type and my skin being kind of dry i don't think this was an overly like dewy or light reflecting foundation like it didn't knock my socks off and i had to be careful so it didn't like become my holy grail but i do like it if i'm like going in with like a light layer i think it is beautiful and quite long lasting one that i absolutely fell in love with in the last month is the elf flawless satin foundation this oh my gosh i don't know i think this has to be like my second favorite foundation in my collection right now doesn't that sound silly this is not a like super hyped up product like people talk about the elf cc cream all the time i never hear them talking about this but this just looks so like medium to full coverage on my skin it never looks cakey on me it just meshes well with my skin like it never breaks apart it doesn't sink into fine lines i don't know this this and another one that's in this bin are like my absolute favorite right now it's just another one of those like satin finishes that plays super well with dry skin i love this this is not going anywhere and i forgot to mention this is in the shade 210 bisque which was previously natural i guess and it's made for like neutral undertones i can see it does have a little bit of warmth in it like as you can see the range of my foundations it's all over the place i basically <laughs> will use anything that even remotely works for me and if i go in with like a light enough layer like you you can't even tell the difference next up i have the pat mcgrath skin fetish sublime perfection foundation this one is in the shade light four I actually like this. I, I don't think it's like my absolute favorite. It's definitely like a lightweight formula, very light coverage, can be built up to medium, not super long lasting. I don't think it's my favorite for the price point. Like honestly, I prefer the e.l.f. one or the Oma Beauty one, or I don't know, a lot of other ones that I went over already. But I think it is nice and because it is so pricey, like I'm definitely gonna hold on to this, but it's it's not my favorite. But if you guys like something that's pretty lightweight, pretty light coverage, I do think it has a beautiful finish. The next one that I have is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. I have mine in the shade 1.5N. This is the reformulated version. It's fairly newer to me. I've only used it a couple of times. It's kind of lightweight, light to medium coverage. And I mentioned this before that I am a pretty big fan of Dior base products, but for whatever reason, this one, like, 
it can tend to look a little bit cakey on my nose. I don't know what it is. I'm just not the biggest fan of this reformulation. Whereas the reformulated concealer from this line is so much nicer. Like it mirrors or mimics the original so much more than I feel like this one does. And I like it and I've used it like three times but I just don't think I love it. I have to be careful how I apply it to my nose because yeah, it can tend to break apart on my nose just a little bit, but because it's Dior and I've used it three times, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to it. Okay, we've moved into Holy Grail territory here. So as you can see, this is my most used foundation. I just purchased this at the end of 2022. So for me to have gone through this much when most of my foundations they, they barely even look used, honestly, because you don't need that much when you're applying them. But this one is, I, I would say, three quarters of the way gone. Something about this foundation and my skin, it's like medium coverage. It never sinks into my fine lines. Honestly, it's the best playing foundation with my skin. I know people like this, but I like love it. <laughs> I, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I'm just sorry that like, I didn't find this sooner. This is something that I traveled with. And yeah, I, I mean, if I'm gonna grab a foundation, any foundation out of my whole collection that I'm gonna travel with, it's going to be this one. It's the only one that never gives me hassle ever. So I love this and this is dang. The last one that I have here is the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Glow. When you're talking about a foundation that's launched glow in its name, this is one that lives up to that. This is the glowiest foundation I have in my collection. It's like glow to the to Jesus and back kind of foundation. Like if you want to glow and you've got dry skin, this is the foundation for you. It's pretty like light coverage. Like I would say you could build it up to medium, but it's it's overall pretty light coverage. It just like it glows in like the right way, right? There are no like actual sparkles in it. It's not the longest wearing foundation by any means, but the glow is just so beautiful without looking like mm, overly greasy. So quite expensive. I do really like it. Again, not the most longest lasting, but the glowiest foundation I've ever used. Okay, another one that I have here is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. This is the shade 20 Fair. I'm on the fence about this product because I think that it's one of the balms that I really do like prefer in my collection. It's just super lightweight. Like there's just not like a whole lot going on. Like there's not a lot of coverage. As you can see, like very, very light coverage, very, very like super lightweight formula. And I sometimes like that. It's just, again, with this, it's like, three to four hours, it's gone. It's gone off my face. I don't think this is an overly buildable product, honestly. I've used this three times, so it's fairly new to me. I wanna keep testing it, but I have to say like all the things that I mentioned, super lightweight, not overly buildable, doesn't last a long time. It's not my favorite, but it's newer, so I'm gonna keep it. If you can't tell, if I don't hate it and it's newer, it stays. If it's newer and I hate it, it goes. That's kind of how I've been doing it. And following that, here is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation, and I have mine in the shade Maracow. This is one of those foundations that like has a lot of hype right now because it's a really, really recent release. I just don't find that it's naturally radiant in any way. This is like a satin foundation that's like medium coverage. It's one of those formulas that I told you is like balmy and tacky, the kind that just don't work well for me. Actually, I'm looking at it, it's like even more full coverage than I kind of remember it being on my swatch here. I just don't find any radiance in it. Like I think that it takes a lot of the hydration out of my face. I don't find that it's glowy or dewy or has any kind of sheen to it whatsoever. I did even try this, like mixing it in with a facial oil from Drunk Elephant, and I didn't find that it like added anything extra. I just think that it's just one of those consistencies that doesn't tend to work really well for me, but works better than the ones that are like this consistency. I know that's a lot of words that I'm saying, but I don't believe in the natural radiance. I think that it's a little bit drier. I think this is a foundation that works better for people with oily skin, but because I've only used it two times, I've got to keep it. I've got to keep testing this out and see, you know, if it's a bad day, a good day, if it is the foundation, if I can figure out a way to make it work. That's the only reason that I'm really keeping it because I didn't immediately fall in love with this. 
The next one that I have here is the Summer Fridays Sheer Skin Tint. This is light coverage. It's just a super, super like runny, liquidy formula. Very, very light, light coverage, but it's one of those like I hate sheer skin tints that I was talking about. It's like sheer, but like actually looks super dry on my nose. Like I don't understand why. It just seems like a really hydrating formula. And I don't know like what's going on. Like even on the swatch, like you can see like it's just not playing well. Like it just doesn't sit on my skin very well. Like it doesn't absorb into my pores very nicely and so I think that's why it starts to like break apart on my nose and I hate it like I hate this this is new I've used this maybe four times and I know that some people love it but look at the swatch on the back of my hands like why is it not sinking in something about my skin it just doesn't play nicely with so I'm done with this I I cannot get it to work for me so it's got to go Another one here that has like one of those like sticky kind of like full coverage almost moussey finishes is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. People love this. People are like raving about this when it launched. It doesn't work for me. I've tried. It's just again that kind of like tacky moussey consistency more full coverage. Doesn't look good on me. Doesn't sink into my skin. Starts to break apart on my nose and my chin. It's terrible on my texture. I've tried it like 96 different ways. It just doesn't look good on me. I have heard other people with like dry skin that this works really well for. It's just not me and I don't know what it is but it doesn't work so I am totally letting this go. A newer one to my collection is the Revlon Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation. This is super dewy. This is a very, very recent launch. Like it just came out in the beginning of January, but this is like, like one of the dewier foundations, like medium coverage, lightweight, light to medium weight foundation, but it's so dewy. Like it just gives this like, ooh, like you're glowing when you put this on. I've only used this one time. So I wanted to keep testing this and I, I don't hate the glow and you can mattify it really easily if you want to. I don't think this is a super long lasting foundation, but I do think that there's a time and a place for like something that's dewy and glowy. So because it's new and because it's kind of nice, I'm gonna hold on to this. Another one that I'm going to hold on to is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. The micro glitters that were initially in this product that a lot of people were talking about are still there, but they're much less than they were after like kind of shaking up the product. And I've worn this a couple of times. I think that it works really well for my dry skin because it's like just that nice consistency. It's medium to full coverage. The one thing that I find with this, it's not the longest lasting foundation on me. Like honestly, it goes about six hours and then it pretty much fades off of my face. I think my natural oils peek through in such a natural way that it actually looks really good. So it breaks down nicely. So overall, so far, I am a fan of this and this is gonna stay. One that has been so long since I have tried it is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation. I have made in the shade, I don't know, 13N Ivory but this is totally expired. Like I can't even remember what I feel about it because I haven't worn it in so long. I just remember it being like this full coverage kind of whipped formula. I remember actually liking it to be honest because it kind of feels like the KVD Good Apple Balm in its consistency, but this is totally expired. Like this has been forever since I've used this. This is not something that I want to use on my face anymore. It's like the oldest foundation in my collection. So this one's going to go. The next one that I have is the Perfect Cover BB Cream from Misha. This is an SPF of 42. I love this. Like this has like a gray tone to it. It's a very strange foundation, but it's so medium coverage and it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's like this in between like satin finish, but kind of dewy. I don't know. I just, I absolutely love the way this looks. It never breaks apart on my face. It plays so nicely with dry skin. And I love that it has like such a high SPF in here. It just looks like perfection and airbrushed on my skin. So this is not going anywhere. The next one that I have is the Charlotte's beautiful skin foundation. I know this was a hit or miss for a lot of people, even like dry skin people. By the way, I have mine in the shade three neutral. I think this is a medium coverage, like medium weight foundation. It, but it looks beautiful on my skin. Like it plays nicely with my dry skin. It lasts a good amount of time. It doesn't break apart on my nose. I just think it's beautiful. So I don't get whatever people dislike about this. I quite like this. So this one stays. 
Okay, we are on the final one. Guys, this is the reformulated Dr. Jart BB Premium Beauty Balm with SPF 40. This is one of the top ones in my collection. This is one of those ones that I was saying, like I have other balms in my collection that I just love. This one reminds me a lot of the Misha one that almost has like this gray tone to it. I love that it has a super high SPF. It plays so nicely with my dry skin. And what this does that the Misha one doesn't is just have like a super glowy, like radiant finish that doesn't look greasy. Like this is special in my collection. This is one of my top ones. So this one is definitely not going anywhere. Okay, that is it for all of them, you guys. Let's round up the ones that I'm keeping and then the ones that I'm decluttering and we'll do a final count. And then after that, we will put all of the foundations that I am keeping back in the drawer so you guys can see the finished product. Okay, I have counted you guys. I have kept 37 foundations and I have decluttered 21 foundations. So we had a total of 58 to start with and we are letting 21 go. So I'm gonna set the camera up and we'll get to organizing and putting it back in the drawer. Okay guys, that is everything. I got everything back. I mean, it's not like perfect and beautiful and I don't have it like organized in any fashion other than the stuff that like can't stand up is laying down. And I didn't put everything away. I do have these ones that I'm either still testing or need to go into like my next speed reviews. So eventually those will have to go back in the drawer and I think I have enough space for them. So I think we're good. And this finally is the box of everything that I'm getting rid of. I do need to still go through that and like chuck the ones that are like really bad. That is the end of my declutter video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you consider subscribing to my channel and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.